Hello everybody, it has been a long time and for that I apologize. I've had a business trip that lasted for a month, that went to a number of countries, had to do that for work. When I came back I lost my voice with a little bit of a virus and I just have not had time or ability to do any videos. But here I'm going to go over some sales trends up till June 2023. Okay, the first thing I'd like to point out is that I passed a major milestone. I say I, I should say we. We passed a major milestone. I say we because there's a lot of people I collaborate with and because Black Box, Black Box itself is a big part of the success. And uh, so the, the milestone is that I went over $20,000 lifetime while on Black Box. That goes all the way back to 2000 and, uh, 2018. So we're looking at a lot of clips over a lot of time, but still, when you think about $20,000, that's the money I use to uh, buy equipment with and travel to do stock video. So it's a hobby that pays for itself and more. If you look at from my sales from 2018 till, to, to, till now, you can see that there is a real trajectory there, and that should be the case with everybody. If you are a regular contributor, and if you continue to improve as you go, your line is gonna look the same way. I do have a lot of clips. Over 6,000 clips are just mine, and then I have more than double that, it's just almost exactly double that, that are cl clips that I curated for other people. I've not reported my stock sales for a long time. Like I said, I've been gone. But if you look at April, April was my all-time high with $809. It's the highest ever. Now, one thing to note is that it was under $400 when the month of April ended, but subscription sales and discount packs uh, were over $450 of that total. So if we continue to see that kind of profit from the smaller sales in bigger bulk, then we're, we've got a good future for stock video. I don't expect to see that every month, but as you can see right here, May is $465. I expect May to be perhaps up around 600, maybe even higher when subscription and discount pack sales are reported, which is generally around the 15th to the 18th of the month. Of course, I imagine that could change over time, who knows. In June so far, I've got $79 worth of sales. It's June 9th today. Um, so that's not great, but it's not terrible. And again, with these subscription sales and discount packs, the way that the industry is evolving, we may even still see good profits from those months yet to come. Now, I didn't keep track of every clip that I sold while I was gone, and some of them have aged off the um, earnings page but I was able to keep a tally and, and I could report to you some percentages of the types of clips that sold. And I'll also give you some examples. Please note that every example that I show you is a clip that actually sold. I'm not showing you examples just to show you examples. I'm showing you things that sold and that made money for me. Um, the first thing and the, most, the thing that sells the most is aerial sales, drone footage. I should probably do more of it. I have a Mavic uh, 3. Um, it does great footage and I really should get out more with it because it accounted for 27% of all my sales. Um, and here's an example. Uh, this is a clip of my own home. I was just practicing. I, I got a real estate gig to do for somebody and I was practicing uh, different moves with the drone on my own house. And I thought, well, I might as well upload it. After all, I've got a uh, property release. So I uploaded it and I've sold the clips from this short shoot of my own home several times. It really is a bit of a surprise to me, but it has sold. Um, the next thing or, or the next highest thing uh, that sold was establishing shots. Take a, this shot as an example. Now this shot has a lot of things in it. It's got the uh, commuter train and it's got these um, solar panels that are covering the parking area. So it could have been sold as a environmental clip. I'm, I'm not sure why it bought, but it also shows Silicon Slopes, uh, which is an industry or a 
kind of a tech tech business uh, park that's near my home. And, um, and I, I, so it could have sold as an establishing shop, but anyway, this is an example of what an establishing shop looks like. The next highest seller was clips with people in it. And uh, when I say people, I'm talking about generally, in general, I'm talking about people where I have model releases. Uh, and this is a good example here. My wife has a home salon and she does mani manicures and pedicures in it. And so this is her. Um, and, I, and every now and then she'll ask me to make a little commercial for her social media um, to, you know, to drum up business. And I'm happy to do it. I always get model releases when I do that and I upload it. And, um, and th this is just a, it's one example. People doing anything, uh, especially though when you have a concept, a nice clear concept of a story of what's happening, those clips are likely to sell. The next highest thing that's sold is environmental. Environmental shots are shots that show things uh, that might illustrate environmental concepts. Here's an example. This is a time lapse of Salt Lake City, not far from where I live. Um, and it was an inversion day, meaning that the, 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 uh, the, the cold air and the warm air trapped the smog down uh, over the city. And uh, now they could have bought it for any number of reasons, but the way I marketed this was carbon emissions, global warming, fossil fuels, those are the types of keywords that I use, and so that's why I'm assuming that this sold, and it's sold a number of times. Time lapses are one of my favorite things to do, and also I curate a lot of time lapses, and um, they sold 8% 8, 8 of my sales uh, over this period that I'm talking about were time lapses. Um, and, and when I say time lapse, I'm including drone hyperlapses or even hyperlapses that you do either with a gimbal or with a tripod or however you do them. Anything that shows this uh, uh, relation of time and environment and location, I'm calling that a, a time lapse, and that's 8%. That's not a lot because I have a ton of time lapse and hyperlapse clips. It's one of the things that I like to do the most. I really enjoy doing them. I think they look cool. They're, they're somewhat magical and dreamy to me. Um, so I'd like to sell more of them, but at least 8% is not bad. If you're going to do time lapses and hyperlapses, it does take more of your time and they have to be good or they're not going to sell. Uh, also at 8% was food clips. Food clips always seem to, I always seem to have some food clips for sale. I don't do a lot of food clips, but I do enough of them that 8% makes me think that maybe I should be doing more of them. Uh, and when I say food clips, I just mean clips of either people cooking or food as it's being presented or plated or served on a food truck, uh, in a restaurant, anything um, that shows the food. My experience is that if you isolate the food itself, that sells better. I don't, I think that it's because they can put it in any context. The buyer can put it in any context when it's just isolated on the food and it doesn't show a lot of the the, the, the space that it's in around it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's why these sell, but it's just uh, something to put out there for you. Last of all, 4% of the clips I sold were wildlife. This is also a bit of a disappointment to me. Wildlife is one of my favorite things to do. I feel like I have very good wildlife clips, but they just don't sell that much. I think if you're doing wildlife clips, it ought to be something you really enjoy because I don't know if you're gonna get the sales that you deserve out of just wildlife clips. Uh, and this uh, is an example. This is a warbler, of course, in a, um, in a, in a stream. Um, and I've got a lot of clips like this. Now, you may note that these percentages do not add up and equal 100%. That's because an establishing shot or an environmental shot may also be a drone shot, or it could be a people shot withdraw. It, it, they don't add up. I'm just giving you basic guidelines of what sold uh, from my portfolio and from the port and, and what I see from clips that I curate in, in what sold. I hope this is helpful. I've got another idea for a video that I'll do next. Some people on the Black Box um, Facebook page have been talking about iPhone footage or smartphone footage. I recently um, got the iPhone 14 Pro. The phone that I had previous to this 
was um, iPhone XR or iPhone 10. I don't know what it's called, but it was about four or five years old. And I did sell clips from it. I would use it as needed. But this one looks to me significantly better. In fact, it looks like you could really do a good job just with an iPhone 14 Pro or probably a 13 Pro. I don't know. I've never seen a 13 Pro. But this has a 4K cinematic selection on it. And so I went ahead and bought the Osmo Gimbal. I'm going to carry that around with me and just pick up shots as they become available. Not necessarily go out and look for shots, but if I see something and I have it with me, I can do handhold or I can do it with the Osmo. And uh, I'm going to do a reel of those just to see, so just so you can see what kind of footage you can do with an iPhone. Uh, and I'm not one of those people that thinks you have to have the best equipment, by the way. I got a Mavic 3, but I think uh, a Mini does well. I think any, any of these drones that do stable footage that's well um, framed and stabilized and exposed correctly is going to do a good job. So that's the, that's the clip I'll work on next. Sorry I've been gone so long. I hope this has been helpful, and I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate the support I get from the Black Box community and from other people who are doing stock video and stock uh, photography. Have a good day.